Hi guys, here is your lesson on 2.4 Day 2, Operations on Functions. Um, for this lesson, we're focusing on the composition of a function. So first of all, what is a composition? The composite function, which you see in this notation, f of g, of two functions f and g, is defined by this. So basically, the composite function is taking a function and putting it into another function. So you're taking the output of one function, and that becomes the input of the next function. So let's actually apply it to some problems. Um, so you have three functions here. You have f of x being x squared minus 16, g of x is the square root of x, and h of x is 2x plus 5. For the first problem, letter A, we are trying to find f of g of 5. So we want to find g of 5 first. You always work with your rightmost function, so you work from right to left. So we find g of 5 first. So g of 5 is going to be the square root of 5. And then this becomes the square root of 5 becomes the input into your f function. So now we're finding f of the square root of 5. So our f function was x squared minus 16. So I have the square root of 5 quantity squared minus 16. Square root of 5 squared is 5 minus 16, which is negative 11. So f of g of 5 is equal to negative 11. So for the numbers, what you would do is you take this number, plug it into that first function right next to it, take that result, and plug it into the next function. Okay, now look, let's look at what happens when you're working with straight functions. So we have h of x which is what we need to find first. h of x, if you look in the directions over here, it says h of x equals 2x plus 5. So h of x equals 2x plus 5. So our input was the x, and the resulting output is the 2x plus 5. So that means this 2x plus 5 becomes the input of the f function, which is the next one. So now I am going to find f of 2x plus 5. So f was x squared minus 16. So instead of x, I have 2x plus 5 squared minus 16. The 2x plus 5 squared, you can do it one of two ways. You can actually do 2x plus 5 times 2x plus 5 and multiply it out and then subtract 16. Um, we did do the square double square uh, a couple weeks ago, so I'm going to do that instead. I'm going to square that first term, so 2x squared is 4x squared. I am going to multiply these two and double it, so that's 10x times 2 is 20x. And then I am going to square my second term, which is 25 and of course minus 16. Um, if you choose to multiply this out, the 2x plus 5 times another 2x plus 5, you would still get that same exact thing. Square double square is just a shortcut. All right, let's combine our like terms. So you have 4x squared plus 20x, and 25 minus 16 is 9. All right. So we evaluated f of h of x. Now we need to find the domain of f of h. Now when you're finding the domain of the composition, you do need to pay attention to the original domains. So the original domain of f, since it does not have a radical and it is not a rational expression, the original domain of f is going to be all real numbers. Looking at h, h is also just a regular function, just a linear function, um, not a radical, not a rational, so that is also going to be all real numbers. So that means the composition, which we have right here, looking at that result, that domain is also going to be all real numbers. 
So the domain for the composition, you look at both of the original domains as well as um, the domain of the actual composition. This is just a quadratic function, and quadratic functions also have all real numbers. So your overall domain is all real numbers. Okay, let's do some more. So this one we are going to start with g of x. So g of x is the square root of x. Now I'm going to go ahead and list the domain of g along the side. So you can't have radicals in the denominator. So for g, our domain has to be x is greater than or equal to 0 or from 0 to infinity. So we'll leave that over there. Uh, from there, we are taking our g of x and plugging it into f. So now we're doing f of the square root of x. So that leaves me with the square root of x quantity squared minus 16. Well, the square and the square root cancel, so that just leaves you with x minus 16. So that means f of g of x is x minus 16. Now our domain of f was all real numbers. The domain of the result, which is the x minus 16, is also all real numbers, but we do have to take this into consideration. Um, since our original domain for g was not all real numbers, the domain of the composition cannot be all real numbers. So the domain of the composition is still from 0 to infinity. Even though the domain of the actual composition, the x minus 16, is all real numbers, we do still need to take into consideration that the domain of g originally was not all real numbers. For letter d, we're doing f of x first. So f of x was x squared minus 16. And now we want to do g of f of x. So g of x squared minus 16. So g of x is the square root of x, so I'm going to have the square root of x squared minus 16. So this can't be simplified further, so that is your composition right here. So the square root of x squared minus 16. Now our original domain for f was all real numbers. So now I need to look at the domain of the composition. So our composition has our f in our g, so the square, uh, x squared minus 16 underneath that radical. So again, underneath the radical cannot be negative. So x, x squared minus 16 has to be greater than or equal to 0. Now this inequality you can solve one of two ways. You can solve using uh, a sign chart or you can graph it and see where that graph is above the x-axis since it's greater than or equal to zero. So graphing it in the calculator, it's above the x-axis from negative infinity up to negative four and four to infinity. Now let's look at um, our original domain for g. So the original domain was a square root, or the original function for g was a square root of x. So your domain for g originally was from zero to infinity. Now the actual domain of the composition is in fact these two intervals together, okay? But if you notice, our domain for g was 0 to infinity, and we can still keep that as an interval for the domain because our f function was placed into the g function, which changes the actual g function. Um, so that's going to change the domain of your function. So again, we're looking at the result of the composition. Um, to be able to determine the actual domain. So the result and the original domains, but we don't have to worry about the domain of g, this one, since we actually changed the function of g, because it was no longer x underneath the radical. It was now x squared minus 16 underneath the radical. I hope that makes sense. I'm just 
feel like I was kind of rambling there for a second. Okay, so we have the compositions of regular functions as well as the domains of those compositions. Now let's look at what happens when you look at the composition in tables. Okay, so for the tables, you really have to pay attention to inputs and outputs. So inside your parentheses is always the x. So when I'm trying to find f of 8, I go to 8 for my f function. That's this right here. The resulting output is 11. So that means f of 8 is 11. g of 6, I go to 6 on my g function. That result is the 9. So g of 6 is equal to 9. Now let's look at the composition. So we first want to find g of 7. So we go to our g table looking for x as a 7. The resulting output is 8. So g of 7 is 8. Now we want to look at f of 8. So I'm going to go to 8 on my f table and that resulting output is 11. So then your final answer for this is 11. So f of g of 7 is equal to 11. I'm going to go ahead and box my answers. Okay. Um, for the next one, I want to find f of 5 first. So I go into my table for f. I am looking for f of 5 as an x, since your input is supposed to be 5, but if you look, our table does not actually have an x being 5. So that means g of f of 5 does not exist. Sad face. Does not exist. Since our f is defined for our x's at 6, 7, 8, and 9, and we didn't actually have a 5 there. Okay. Um, letter E, let's do G of 7 first. So G of 7, going to my table, 7 is the X, the output is the 8. So now I am finding G of 8, this one you're working in the same function, so looking at the same table. So my X is 8, that output is 7. So that means g of g of 7 is 7. Lots of 7s right there. Okay, last one, it is a triple composition. So we can start with f of 6. So looking at my table, f of 6 is 7. Because my x was 7, or sorry, my x is 6, the y is 7. Now I am going to look at f of 7. So again, compositions, you take the outputs and you put them in the next function. So f of 7 is 5. And then finally, I am looking at g of 5. So g of 5 is 10. So that means g of f of f of 6 is 10. All right, so that covers all of the material for uh, 2.4, day 2, the composition. All right, see you guys in class.